G'day folks, Connor here from Sudobs Media, back with another video, and today we're doing a full review of the Oppo Reno 10 5G. Here it is. Yes folks, there it is. It looks amazing. It looks amazeballs. Really digging the Oppo Reno 10 5G. Now, forgive me for being a little bit laid out of the blocks with this one. Somehow, I've slipped down the ranks of people who get the devices first, and I'm somehow later on down the track. But, you know, when you're hot, you're hot. When you're not, you're not. So, just, just roll with it. It's one month late, at least. I do want to say, this Oppo device is as good as the other Oppo Reno variants, except this is the latest one, so it's got some extra specs in it, it's got some extra features in it. They let out these incremental updates for these devices, and it's no different here. Incremental updates, but yes, at the end of the day, it's better than the last Oppo Reno version. And I'm just gonna jump straight in, because when you look at Oppo's website, and you look at their marketing gear on this device, it's all about portrait photography. So here we have a 32 megapixel front facing camera that can do a lot in portrait mode. And I'm pretty impressed with the results. Now, you know me, I'm not really the selfie kind of guy, but I do appreciate a camera that can take a really good picture like that and just send it out to social media and you get that with the Oppo Reno 10 5G. And like I said, portrait mode is what they're talking about here. And let me just go in and tell you about some of the portrait mode features that they, that they have here. Now you can easily adjust your background blur, so your aperture. You can change that within the camera settings to give you a blurry background or a not so blurry background. That's pretty cool to be able to do at this price point. You cannot do that with your Pixel 7a which is the same price point, to the cent. Now, Obo is saying you can do that just like with a DSLR. I'm going to say not as good as a DSLR, but pretty good for a mid-range phone. Now, it is the Sony flagship sensor, so it is the IMX709, which Sony, they're known for making camera sensors, and they are saying that this is giving you 60% more light in your photos and reducing ISO noise by 35%. Now, I don't have the old Oppo really to compare it to, so I can't really verify that, but that's what they're saying in their marketing gear. Now, it does also give you the ability to crop in on your portrait photos, which I think is pretty cool, and it doesn't distort the image or change the shape of your face uh, in the way it would in some other cameras. So that's pretty nice to have as well. Now, I did use this for a bit of vlogging, and here are the results from that. Okay, this is the Oppo Reno 10 5G rear-facing camera, 4K. Currently using Rode Video Mic Go 2 to record the audio, just because I want to. Uh, but there will be snippets throughout this where you can hear the video without the microphone. But if you were going to vlog, this would be your setup. So tell me what you think of that down below. This is indoors, and I'm just going to jump outdoors right now. Okay, this is outside, outdoors, 1080p front-facing camera on the Oppo Reno 10 5G. There's the sun behind me, there's the sun shining on me. It does have that retouching mode as well, so I'm probably going to not look so natural, going to look a little bit uh, fake. However, it doesn't support OIS in front-facing camera, so no optical image stabilization, but I'm walking now handheld, it's on a little tripod but I'm holding the tripod with my hand you can tell me if it's stable enough for you to vlog with I think it looks okay but it is only 1080p and a lot of devices these days in this price range do support 4K on the front facing camera this is 32 megapixels so it does take pretty decent front facing photos but anyway this is the Oppo Reno 10 5G Front facing camera, 1080p. Now we're going to switch to the rear facing camera. Okay, so here I am on the Oppo Reno 10 5G rear facing camera, 4K 30 frames per second. 
Now if I want to shoot in 60 frames per second, I've got to go down to 1080p. And also if I want better stabilization or what they call ultra stabilization, I've got to go down to 1080p as well. But 4K, 30 frames per second, what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. I think it could still be 4K 60. I don't know why they've got to go and cripple it. 750 bucks, it's pretty standard these days to get stab in 4K 60. So this is me walking with 4K without stabilization. So you can tell me what you think of how shaky it is. And then I'm gonna to turn to 1080p 60 with stabilization on in one second. So now I'm in 1080p, 60 frames per second. And the interesting thing is, as soon as you turn on stabilization, it just automatic, automatically changes to 1080p 60. So you don't have to go in and out of the settings. It just throws it out for you from 4K 30 to 1080p 60, which is a pain in the backside because then you do have to go back into 4K 30 and change it manually back when you've finished. It doesn't automatically change it back. So that's interesting. But you know, this isn't the best light. This is 1080p, 60 frames per second in pretty harsh lighting. I was trying to wait for golden hour, but I just ran out of time. Now, if you do want to shoot in anything but 4K 30, it straight away cripples it. So optical image stab on, cuts out the 4K. Autofocus on, cuts out the 4K. Slow motion, cuts out the 4K. Telephoto lens cuts out the 4K. And you can't go into 0.6 mode, it will cut out the 4K. So there is a lot of crippling going on when you go to 4K mode and you really are stuck with this 4K 30. Which is a pretty good image, but you can't do anything else with it. You know, you can't play around with it. To do that, you do have to go into 1080p, which isn't that bad. And then you've got your normal photography modes as well and you've got like the other stuff like panorama and all that sort of thing Now I, I'm pretty much one of those dudes that I just pull my camera my phone out of my pocket And I leave it in auto mode and shoot and if I'm going to do anything Serious for photography. I'm going to use my mirrorless camera, but for point and shoot on a phone I'm getting some really good photos here from just your average wide angle lens through to your ultra wide look and even cropping in or zooming in a little bit in camera you can get some really good results now you can turn on all the bells and whistles here and get some highly oversaturated over sharpened images that people seem to love on social media you get that right here or you can go in and have a bit more control over your image and dial it back a bit which is what i do like to do but you do have to go into your settings and make it that way it's generally turned on to be able to produce a pretty saturated image, which isn't bad. It looks amazing. And I think you'll be impressed with these photos. As you can see from the ones I'm sharing here, there ain't nothing wrong with these photos. Now, when it comes to battery life, you do get 5,000 milliamp hour of battery life and it lasts you a couple of days, I'm gonna say, at least someone like me, I'm a pretty heavy user. I'm getting two days use out of it. That's at a stretch. But if I can do it, then you're gonna get two, maybe three days easy. And it also has some pretty heavy fast charging as well. Comes with a 67 watt fast charging brick in the box. And I think you're gonna go from like zero to 100% in 44 minutes. So pretty incredible. So in the box, you get a USB type C cable, perfect size for throwing at an Apple user's head because they've only just got USB type C and they're all gonna be scampering around looking for a, a USB type C cable to charge their stupid Apple phone with. But battery life is done really well in conjunction with the software and the hardware, they seem to just really tweak it perfectly. And I think Oppo is like A plus for charging speeds, but also for battery optimization. I don't get one day out of my Pixel device ever. Not out of the 7 Pro, the 7 or the 7A or the 6A or the 6 Pro. I never got one full day of battery out of that. And on the Oppo, I easily get a full day. I just, I mean, it's a two day device. So kudos there. Now we are talking 256 gigs of RAM, which is plenty of storage for those of you that don't like using the cloud. I use the cloud so I could get away with 128, but I know most people we want more storage. 
And it does come with 8 gigabytes of RAM, but that is expandable as well through that RAM expansion mode that you can use, giving you a total of 16 gigabyte, which is pretty cool. Now, I don't know how effective it is, but it looks effective on paper or on your display, and I don't have any problems here with the performance on this device. It also comes with a Dimensity chipset. That's a 6 nanometer Dimensity 7050 chipset so you're going to get plenty of power out of that and plenty of efficiencies as well now they are offering what's called here fluency protection where they're saying it your device is going to perform just as well in four years as what it does today and they're offering this thing called fluency protection so worth noting that they have that because a lot of people say oh what's a device like after you install your apps on it or what's it like a year later well oppo are saying we're going to put this in writing that it has 48 month fluency protection. Now we are talking 120 hertz refresh rate for the screen, which is great for gaming, great for scrolling, gives you that buttery smooth feel. You're going to love that. And the gaming is good as well. I mean, here's some images of me gaming on it, uh, Asphalt 9. I do play a couple of other games as well, but I'll try not to because I'm just going to waste time on them. But if you are a gamer, this can game really well. I mean, I see a lot of people playing Mobile Legends and Genshin Impact, and yes, the Oppo Reno 10 5G can manage all those games with ease. It is a 6.7 inch display and is HDR10 Plus certified. You do get some really nice, vibrant colors out of it, and you can choose between like a natural and a saturated look. I forget, maybe one's called Vivid or something. Let me figure that out before I just talk rubbish so for your screen color mode i said the wrong words before it is a, between vivid and natural and you can choose that when you're setting up the device and they also have it for video mode as well so you can have video color boost and it only works on some supported apps and if you click on the link in the actual settings it takes you to a list of apps in the app store that are compatible with that video boost color mode video color boost mode is what it's called so that's pretty cool as well but look at that that looks really nice like i said it's 120 hertz refresh rate it is 6.7 inch it looks amazing and it's 93 percent screen to body ratio so pretty slim bezels there i'm very happy with the bezels i'm really happy with the display it looks awesome now i do also want to point out unlocking this you can use the fingerprint sensor which is at the very bottom of a display in my opinion it's a bit too low or you can use face unlock which i couldn't trip up it was so incredibly fast it was so incredibly fast as usual i find with oppo devices that i you know at first i was like i'm not even going to set out the fingerprint sensor face unlock is too quick and I was like, I got to do it. I got to check the fingerprint scanner for the review. That works just as well. My only gripe is that it's too low. And I have said that previously about the Oppo devices. That fingerprint scanner just seems to be, just put it up like three quarters of an inch on the display. It'll be in the perfect spot if you are going to have it in the display. But face unlock is my pick. You can see from these videos now that it is super fast, works every time. Once you scan your face once, it took about one second for it to register my face and it's worked flawlessly ever since. So it comes in two colors, ice blue and silver gray. The silver gray color looks really nice. I was just showing you that before, but I do think the ice blue looks a little bit different. Like it's nice to be different and not the same as everyone else. But that silver gray is definitely not your typical matte black color or black color. It's got a bit of an edge to it. I do like it. Um, the, the edges are a little bit thin. It would be nice if they were a little bit more sturdy. I think I think like um, Apple devices, just the way they've built their edges is amazing. And it's unusual that Oppo haven't tried to copy that design, but they sort of have at the top. And I think if this feeling was all the way around on this device, it would be way better. But it's still nice to hold. One thing too, I do want to point out, is that Oppo has stopped putting cases in the box. So I'm running around with this on bareback mode, and that scares me. It feels pretty fragile.
you're going to want to go onto Amazon and pick up a couple of cases. I've put a link down below to some, so you can just grab one if you need to, um, but I haven't tested these cases that I'm linking to. It's just a quick fix for you if you haven't got a case yet. Now it is only eight millimeters thick as well, so it is a very thin device. I like how they put so much hardware in this, and I don't seem to get any overheating problems or anything like that. Now software is currently Color OS 13.1, with the Android security patch update for July, and I'm currently talking in October. So it is a little bit far behind, and I'd wish that, if anything, they would just keep those security updates frequent and long-lasting. It is a bit, uh, you know, like July, August, September, October. You're going on three to four months there without an update. Would be nice to see an update come through every month. I understand that they've got a lot on their plate. Oppo, they have a lot of devices out there, so it would be hard to achieve that. Um, they do a pretty good job of it, and ColorOS is really awesome as well, but that's, those security updates are the concern. You know, We're all worried about getting ripped off, getting scammed, so security updates are what's gonna make us or break us there. Could be a little improvement. I do like the features of ColorOS 13.1, Oppo's doing an amazing job there, and you're just not going to get any hiccups, whether it's checking emails, SMSing, social media, communication apps, all that stuff you're going to do just fine. Watching content, it's going to be just fine. Scrolling web pages, just fine. I really don't think you could find a smartphone these days that's going to struggle with most of those things. Um, and here, you can multitask as well. You can go back and forth between apps and get the most out of your device. So... All in all, this is a really great mid-ranger. I think the only reasons that I would be skeptical for this one would be the security updates. And I do think the photography is a little bit on the um, fake side, whereas some of the other players in the industry or players in the game, they like to keep it a little bit more natural. But there's a lot of features in there. You don't have to use all the features in the camera, but I think that some of the photos are a little bit behind the eight ball. And at 750 bucks, I'd say maybe some of the video features that get disabled when you go into 4K mode, um, at 750 bucks, it's starting to get a little bit behind the eight ball with that as well. So worth pointing out. But overall, love the device. I mean, if there's only Oppo phones around, I wouldn't be complaining. If you haven't tried an Oppo phone before and are considering it, this is definitely a good entry point into the Oppo marketplace, and you're gonna get a great device here with the Oppo Reno 10. Uh, shop around for others if you want to. I don't get anything if you buy an Oppo or not, but I'm definitely impressed with them, always have been. Thank you, Oppo, for sending me this. I will be sending it back shortly. Have enjoyed my time with it, and thank you, everyone, for watching this video. I have really enjoyed making this video for you. So I will catch you all in the next video. Thank you for coming. Catch you in the next one. Check out.